Good morning, welcome back to the gorgeous city of Bath. Absolutely beautiful place. Now if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you, you'll know that I came and spent a couple of hours with my mate Julian doing some street photography. Not so long ago, probably about a month or two ago, and we only had two hours to spend in Bath. So yeah, first opportunity to get back and spend some proper time here, straight on it. Uh, the reason for coming down here today is I've actually arranged a um, photo walk with a few of you guys who follow me on YouTube and on Instagram. So it's gonna be good to meet up with you guys. Um, spend a bit of time wandering around taking the sights in but also I wanted to give something a try basically it's the middle of October and Fujifilm haven't even announced the X-Pro3 officially yet although we know it's out we know the spec we know what the camera is and it's already built quite a lot of uh, interest and opinion online so I thought what I'd do I'd actually shoot today with my X-Pro2 I normally use my X100F because I like the size of it it's, you know, it fits in your pocket but I thought I'd give the X-Pro2 a go and as you can see I've actually taped up the back screen to make it look a bit like an X-Pro3. Give it a go just to see how much I actually miss using that back screen. Now obviously there's a lot of people that are sort of just going on the specs of the cameras, see, seeing what the camera hasn't got as opposed to who the camera's aimed for, who it's aimed at. And purists and, and people like, like the camera just to be a box just an extension of your arm, not to get in the way, not to interfere with your shooting, and, and obviously just using the eyepiece, are gonna love the X-Pro3. I'm really, really excited to get my hands on one. Um, I know for street photography, I absolutely love it. I'm a bit confused as to whether or not I'll get on with it with my weddings and stuff, because sometimes you, you need to be able to use the back screen and stuff. So yeah, that's part, partly one of the reasons why I've taped up the screen on this X-Pro2, <laughs> you can see that. Um, just to just to see how much I actually do, because I, I think I shoot with the, with the EVF 99% I, I, of the time. I'm, I'm pretty certain I can get away without using the uh, the back screen. So this is going to be a good challenge. I'm going to let you know at the end of the video how liberating or how frustrating it was. And I forgot to mention actually on the way into Bath, I'm probably going the wrong way again. Um, I passed a an artist gallery, and I could see through the door. The the guy was painting, and he had this really really nice light. So I popped in. Spoke to him for a few minutes and he very kindly let, allowed me to take a photograph. So really, really cool. But what I wanted to do, I didn't want to disturb him. I wanted to, because he was, he was just enjoying his painting. He was enjoying getting on with it. So I wanted to just, I put the camera on electronic shutter um, and, and fired away at f2.8. Just got some nice uh, low light shots. I think they look really, really cool, especially in black and white. Right, another thing I'm trying to use today is I'm trying to get on with this gimbal. It's a new Zion Crane M2. And it's the first time I've used it properly and the buttons <laughs> fell off the front of it. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a difficult challenge trying to use this gimbal. Um, but we're heading off now. We've got everybody together. Um, it's a good number actually. And we're just gonna do a wander around. We're gonna get a loop. There's a few people here that know the area. So I'm looking forward to seeing if they know any cool places to do some shots. Um, but yeah, quite, quite a good turnout. Really looking forward to this. It'll be good fun. All right, so I'm back at a location I came to with Julian and um, a couple of weeks back, and it was really, really overcast. I really love these pillars that are all around. It's just a case of wandering around, looking for a composition and then waiting, I suppose, for somebody to, to come into the set. So that bin in the background there is crucifying me. Such a shame that's there. But yeah, really, I have to get a good shot here. What I'm gonna do is wait on this corner, um, camera down low, just pre-focus probably around about five meters in front of the scene. I'm down to about f5.6 now because I want to keep the settings easily adjustable. So when the sun, because it's going to be clear, I'm saying that, the sun's coming out again. When it gets bright, I can just flick that back to f11 or f8, depending on what the Instagram's saying. And when it goes overcast, I can flick it to 5.6, five, uh, focus five meter, and then yeah, just grab a shot. So I'm not leaving this scene until I get a good photo. Shadows are gone now. Would have been really, really nice. This might be worth waiting for. The girl with the dog, that's a fantastic subject, that is. Oh, the light's gonna come out again. She's going the other way. But now I'm gonna try and get this scene here, really like this. Wait for one person. The trick is to get the good light there. Um, wait for one person. Keep it simple. Nice shadows. And that will be a lovely, oh, there's the light coming out. See the shadows now on them girls now. But I just, 
I just don't like it when there's more than one person. So yeah, Focused Infinity, I'm at F11 now, 500 per second, ISO 500. Gorgeous lines in the floor there, chaps. Look at that. Standing here, you've got them fantastic lines. Would you stand up a little bit, or just? You... Yeah, well, you got to keep them them verticals vertical, don't you? That's okay. crucial. That. Uh, don't like two people. Don't like two people. Worth waiting for, though, chaps. <laughs> Look at this light. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. These pillars, nice directional light, and we're all uh, spending about five minutes just having a wander, get some different different angles of it, see which weather where the shadows work best. It's good because everybody's kind of shooting the same way, or seeing the same thing. And I'll, admit, I'll admit there's been one or two stage pictures as well, <laughs> mainly me jumping around like an idiot. This composition is fantastic. I uh, really, really like the angle coming down here. Um, really, really nice uh, light on the side. The tones in that pillar is fantastic. So, yeah, uh, what I can't get really is a definitive edge on the bottom of the picture, which is a bit annoying, but um, yeah, really, really nice. So, just waiting for somebody to come from the right because obviously I want them as a silhouette, uh, but the wrong height person would lose his head. This guy drove all the way from Derby to meet us. We got here about an hour ago. Originally found us, couldn't get hold of us. <laughs> I feel really bad, Nick. Glad he actually made it though. Um, we're back in the square in Bath now. I really, really like this. You kind of notice how this wall has got these really, really contrasty lines dividing it. But what I'm trying to do is get a really, really strong silhouette on the on the left hand side, have it as a square, so a really, really strong line down the middle of the shot. Uh, pre focus, I'm back at F8. Just get Keep knocking my camera. Really? Need to wait for one person, oh, the lady coming through here now. I wasn't sure I was going to get told off. Someone's got no I really, got no I really, really like this arrow though, and it just needs to, it needs to have the right person standing in front of it. Not you. That's cheating. <laughs> yeah, I really like this arrow. So I had the right person looking at us. That guy might have been all right. Uh, that guy over there would have been perfect. One person. I don't know which way. Which way would they be walking? Nah. We'll give it a couple of minutes. See how we get on. It is quarter past three. We have had a day four, pretty much, of non-stop, really, really good sky, good clear skies, nice bright light, strong contrast. And we've wandered down to the train station in Bath. There's all these fantastic columns everywhere. And down this way, it's absolutely awesome. We've got a really, really nice, strong contrast, first four lines and everything. So yeah, just, to, just gonna give this a couple of 10 minutes. We're kind of standing around, loitering, cluttering up the area. But uh, yeah, we've all sort of spotted this fantastic uh, tunnel with a really really strong contrast in it so there's got to be a nice shot here even if this lady is trying to tell me off as I'm filming <laughs> right fantastic columns fantastic light really strong verticals portrait and using the really dark part of the corner there's a guy standing down there, a bit lost. He's a bit too far away from me with the 35mm. But 
Somebody like that messed up there. I should have been further back on the corner. Pre-focusing. Oh, there's a pre-focus on that corner. F11 still. I just wait for one person to close the gap so I can't see through there, through the restaurant. But them lines, that's fantastic. I took a photograph because it's on electric shutter, but uh, <laughs> do they, do they have to be that was a fantastic day, really, really enjoyed. Thank you so much to the guys that came along and met me on the photo walk. Really good to see Bath spend some time wandering around. I know a lot of you's got uh, they got some really, really good images, so I'll put them at the end of the video as well. So check them out and obviously give them a follow on Instagram as well. I really enjoyed my whole experience, I have to be honest, walking around with a taped up uh, LCD and only being able to see the images or take the images through the viewfinder. I really, I mean, to be honest with you, um, that's how I, I do most of my work anyway. I always shoot with EVF, um, very rarely, um, only with landscape photography really do I use, the, use the, the, the screen anyway. So to be honest, I knew I was gonna be okay with that. But it was a good experiment just to see how, how I would cope and if I would notice the, uh, it wasn't really a limitation. It was, I did feel that, um, yeah, it was just a case of, it made you aware that you couldn't chimp and it was it's a good habit it's a bit like when i go out shooting with my film cameras you you look you look forward to the process and you eventually see the images when you get back to the computer or when you've developed the film so it's a really really good um it's a good idea actually tape up your up, up the back of your uh, your camera and go out and take some pictures it's it's quite a good good way of uh, you don't miss a shot because you you you're focused on the uh, on the subject and you're not sort of taking a picture looking at the back of your thing so it's a it's a good it's a good uh, habit to get into actually so yeah give it a go um now the X Pro Two, Fujifilm X Pro Two, has it's probably been my all-time favourite camera. Um, I've I, I adore the Fuji system, but the X Pro Two, the rangefinder camera, is definitely my my favourite ergonomically. Anyway, um, obviously with the uh, the interchangeable lenses, um, I love the X One Hundred F as well. Um, but it's slightly smaller for my hands, so I have to put a grip on that. And obviously, I can't change the lenses, and it's only got the one card slot and not weather sealed, so I can't really use that for my pro work. But this camera has been um, has been well, best friend sort of thing. I, I absolutely love it. I love the ergonomics. I love I love pretty much everything about it. So the idea of the X Pro Three coming along was obviously very very exciting, and I could not wait to get my hands on one. And I was very excited to see what the specs would be. Um, now, obviously, we know that the, the X-Pro3 is going to have the flip-down screen. It's got the hidden back screen, hence the reason why I've taken this up. Um, there's a few other changes as well, which I'll talk about. Um, and obviously, it's going to share the same sensor as the Fujifilm X-Pro X-T3, uh, which I have. And I know what, how that sensor performs, so I'm really excited. I know, I know exactly how good the X-Pro3 is going to be. Um, they've also they obviously improved things like the uh, lower lo low light uh, focus down to minus six stops, which is fantastic. Um, when I when I do events and I'm using this camera as well as the X-T3, as soon as I pick this camera up and I'm trying to focus in low light, I do notice how much slower this is at focusing. So being able to focus better than the X-T3 is gonna be amazing. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, things I didn't like about the X-Pro2, number one, <laughs> the diopter thing, which it kept knocking all the time. So glad they've moved that, so that won't be an issue now. The compensation dial, another one I knock all the time. I never take it off C, it's always on C, and I can obviously use the dial there on the back to change the shutter speed. I always knock that, so hopefully that, they've not put a lock on it, which I'd like them to have done, but they, they it looks like it's further in, so that won't get knocked. Um, I'm not so sure on the not being able to, on having no screen. I think for street photography it's fine, but for my weddings and events when I can just take the camera from my eye and then take a quick shot lower down or whatever, looking at the back of the screen, I think, um, I'm not really a fan of the flip down screens on most cameras, even on the XT, unless I'm doing landscape photography, I don't tend to use the flip down screen too much. Um, the D-pad, they've got rid of the D-pad, and I'm sure it's a bit like Apple when they get rid of the buttons and stuff like that, and it's like, how do you cope? And then you'd never go back once you get used to it. 
but I've got these programmed, these assigned, these D buttons, shortcuts, and I know where they are and I can find them with my eye to the viewfinder. So I'm a bit worried about how that's gonna be incorporated, where the shortcuts are gonna be. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have to remain judgment. I'm not gonna say anything on that one until, I, until I've seen how they've done it. Um, the AF button, that I don't mind where it is. It was just never a bit, it's never quite pronounced enough. Um, so yeah, it's quite hard to find. I don't, it doesn't look like they've changed that though. I'd like them to have put a little lift on that uh, just so you can feel it a little bit better. Um, um, the little mini display that they've put on the back there where I've got my Ecross sticker, um, they've put this mini display there which can, do, can obviously display the exposure triangle or your film simulation. Now I shoot RAW all the time, um, plus JPEG if I'm doing some something for an event that they need the images quick. Um, I don't really need to see that and I certainly don't need to see the exposure triangle because that's the good thing about the Fuji cameras that you can already see that on the top of the camera. So. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this little screen. I'd rather that wasn't there and they just kept the camera plain. Uh, if it wasn't gonna have a screen, then fine, but don't know why. I'm not sure if that's gonna get in the way of your nose when it's against there or what, whether it's, it's yeah, it's one of the things. We'll, we'll have to see. Right then, so um, yeah, I got some really good images from, from Bath. I'm really excited. I was really excited to get back and there's one or two that I took that were um, that were different. <laughs> so we'll run through them. I know a lot of you enjoyed going through the pictures, see what I liked, see what I didn't like and see perhaps how I could have improved them. Um, there was a few images that I left in there. I probably weren't my sort of style, uh, but I left them in there because I thought I, I always try and give a variety to my street photography, so I don't always take the same sort of image. But we'll run through now and have a look at the way that the, the, uh, the camera, the, the image now, and see how they come out. So the first image I took, I hadn't even got as far as the coffee shop. I'd not parked my car about 100 yards. I'd seen this guy through a window um, painting. And now just just nipped in very quickly, just grabbed the, grabbed the snap really. Didn't want to get in his way. Uh, but I really, really do like this scene. Um, it's quite traditional. It's, 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 it is what it is. But it's, it's just the way that light focuses in uh, on the details there. It's really, really nice. Oh, I was really happy with that image. Um, a lot of the images did come out a bit dodgy with the electronic shutter though. So um, when there was a bit of bit more white area, you could see a bit abandoned in from the electric shutter because of that type of light bulb um, but yeah that one came out nice my first real street shoot uh, street image I'd say from the trip really really happy with this um, this is a bit of a fluke because when I seen this girl walking down towards me she looked great she looked really confident loved the stride loved everything but not only that she actually blocked the bin <laughs> so wherever I'd focus she actually walked perfectly in front of the bin there so uh, yeah and yeah I managed to get some nice tones I was low to the floor and didn't realise, but I actually managed to get these um, columns vertical. I was surprised how vertical they came out. Um, but yeah, the Christmas decorations are up. I think I actually edited them out in one version, maybe the one in the video. Um, this scene I waited patiently for because I knew it had potential. Um, I'd, yeah, I'd give this 10 or 15 minutes just waiting uh, for somebody to come around. The ballard ruins it a little bit, but I could have got rid of the ballard, but it is, it's there, isn't it? You don't want to, I don't want to, take too much away from the image that is actually there. Really like the shape coming in from the bottom right hand corner though, um, taking your eyes across the scene. Um, yeah, it's nice silhouette, really, really nice, like the shadow. As it as, as Street Photography goes, I've got a couple of things. I don't tend to photograph kids um, and homeless people and vulnerable people and people that don't look like they're having too much of a good time. Um, but this photograph, I really liked it. It was like a black and white scene, and then I seen the girl come around the corner. She was far enough away from the camera, so I thought, Do you know, if if it looks like she's she's a very very small part of the picture, I'll include it. But the red jacket just jumps out from the from the image, and I really like the tones. I really like the light. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased with the image. To be honest with you, I think it came out really really nice. Obviously, definitely a colour image, but it looks like a spot colour because it's quite muted tones. New um, muted colours, sorry, around the rest of the image. It's uh, classic chrome comes out really really well there. Okay, so like the image, dislike the image. Um, I knew that whoever walked through that was gonna lose their head, <laughs> um, just because, purely because of the angle of that shadow. Um, but at the same time, it kind of works that he loses his head. It's interesting, it's anonymous. I don't know, I like the light. I like everything about the image. Um, apart from that back um, sort of, not gutter, but that back lower brick, which shows that the it doesn't look horizontal it shows it, it there's a slight angle on the bottom there obviously the, the columns perfectly vertical and, and so is the window in the background but that line in the background annoys me that it's not straight but otherwise I do like the image I think it's quite nice and obviously the, what was crucial in that was getting the corners right I had to get corner to corner not nice diagonal strong uh, contrast line going from corner to corner 
bit of an obvious shot when we seen it, but I knew uh, a few of the other guys were, were keen to get this sort of image. So uh, waited for, waited at this uh, at this spot uh, for the light to come back and give us this nice contrast. And obviously, all it is is a it's it's kind of an obvious street shot but it's just nice because you get this nice silhouette of a lady that kind of blends into that black area on the left uh, everybody seems to be on their phone as they walk in um, which is i don't know either, either frustrating or you just got to accept it i don't know um i'm not sure about the shadow with the christmas decorations pointing down to it it adds something and at the same time it's irritating but yeah it's part of the image and i like that you can just see her foot sticking out the bottom there it's quite nice this image I loved. When I seen this, it cracked me up. It's it's different. It's it's one of the things you're never going to replicate. Guy out there painting. I don't know if you can see, but on that sign there, it says wet paint. Um, yeah, really, really pleased with this image. It made me laugh. Um, I wanted to stand around and wait for this guy to do something better as, as opposed to smoking. But uh, yeah, really, really liked that image. Uh, took a few angles of that one. Thought this was a bit more interesting, a bit more geometry in the in in the shot. Um, but yeah, really, really happy with that. Looks uh, looks like a nice. He kind of blends into the to the environment. It's like. A, it's not only is obviously black and white, but it's like the tones are pretty much identical with him and his surrounding. It's really, really quite, quite cool. It's like he's been painted and so is the building. It looks really cool. Yeah, I, I do like this image. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that some street photography is kind of obvious. When you see an arrow, you wait for somebody to walk past it. Um, but I did like the composition. Obviously, it gave the other, the other guys an opportunity to sort of gather up and, and have a go at grabbing some, uh, some fun images. Um, I really wanted somebody a bit more quirky than this chap to walk by. We didn't really wait very long, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice image. Um, obviously, the arrow pointing to the subject. It's, it's, it's a bit of fun, nothing serious. Now, this lady made me laugh, as you've seen in the video. I was talking away. She thought I was filming her and, uh, and, and, and photographing her purposely. And to be honest, I, was, I wasn't really, didn't really notice until afterwards what, how, how quirky she was. Uh, if you zoom in, you can see her. I don't know what she's doing with her hand, just either covering her face or what, but she actually tried to charge us for taking a picture. Afterwards, she said, if you wear, uh, yeah, I'll send you a bill, she says, or it's a pound to take my photograph, she was saying to us. <laughs> yeah, very quirky, but we really did like this scene, uh, but it was just constantly people walking through it in big groups. So we, you know, it, it, it would have been nice if we'd have got one person in that frame, but no, didn't really happen. Now, this is when I said about waiting around for other guys to take pictures, and I turned around and spotted this composition. I really liked it, but I thought we were going to move on, so I wasn't expecting much. But then I thought, you know what, we're going to be here a couple of minutes. I'll, I'll hang out for this and, and see what happens. Um, it's a busy place. I didn't expect this area on the left of him to be clear as much as it is. Um, but as he was walking by, just to spot this and him be, you know, um, sort of smartly dressed in a really interesting foreground. Really, really nice. I, I was really, complete fluke, complete fluke. Um, I'd focused at about three meters, so I knew everything was gonna be sharp and just had to wait. But to get everything vertical like that, again, without <laughs> no screen on the back of the camera, um, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with this image, but I wish, I'd, I, wish I was further back so I, I could have got it from this angle because I prefer being able to see the top of that column there. Uh, yeah, really like this image. Nice, nice tonal image. Uh, really, really nice geometry. I was perfectly positioned as well, so I couldn't see through the gaps of the um, of the pillars, which made it a bit more cluttered. But um, yeah, nice. It would have been a lot better having that fellow in that uh, in that shot. I really, really would have uh, loved that photograph then. But uh, yeah, um, the th this image was basically an experiment. We were all heading back to the cars, and um, I said to the guys, like, let's let's try something a bit different. Let's focus at two meters. Put your camera on silent if you can, um, and then just just have the camera ready just to, as people walk, interesting people walk up to you just to grab a few snaps uh, as they walk by. So you're not focusing. You you pre-focus at two meters, um, f8, and um, and yeah, just just try and get some a bit different, a bit a bit closer to the camera. Um, and I don't tend to do f many many images like this, but to be honest, when they do work out, I really do like them. Um, I like everything about this lady, I like her posture, I like what she's doing with her arms, I like that she's, um, I don't know if she's related in somewhat to the guy behind her, but it's just a really nice frame, I really like that image. Um, like, like what she's dressed, how she's dressed and everything, it come out really, really well. So I'm gonna have to try and, um, and get more images like this, I think, and just do an hour or so pre-focused at two meters and just wait for people to interact with the camera and get some uh, in your face kind of photographs. But yeah, I do like that image. This image kind of doesn't work now. At the time you could see the, the two guys, the two gentlemen were sitting there on their phones, but 
in the photograph it doesn't really work. Um, you can't really see the guy in the background is on his phone and the guy in the foreground is on his phone. They're both the same age. It could, it, a long time ago they'd have spoke to each other, you know, they'd have turned around and said, "How good day, how are you, sort of thing. But now they're both on a mobile phone. Um, I don't know, the late 70s or whatever, but it, it just shows the times, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, I, I did like that image otherwise. Um, in 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 On location, it was good. It doesn't really work as a photograph, but I thought I'd leave it in because it's a it's an interesting story, Not choosing not to talk to each other. <laughs> so yeah, um, really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please uh, leave a comment, let me know which of your fam favorite images. I think I've got, I've definitely got one or two from this, from this shoot that I really enjoyed. Um, and once again, thanks so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave me a comment, let me know. Um, and uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram and uh, I'll let you know when the, uh, when the next photo walk's gonna be. Uh, hopefully up north, around Manchester, Liverpool sort of way soon. Newcastle perhaps. But uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for watching. Take care. Thank you.